Eric? Uh, I agree with Councilman Ost. Uh, I think that the mayor's uh, position is pretty important as well as symbolic. Um, the mayor is, of course, the figurehead for the city, like uh, Mr. Ost said, uh, he's the face of the city. Uh, I think he also should provide guidance and uh, nudge, generally nudge the public in a, the correct direction. Uh, for instance, uh, bicycles, uh, there need to be wider bicycle lanes. So something through like the mayor's challenge, the Blue Zone Mayor's Challenge, uh, the mayor is instrumental in helping that happen and pushing the public to accept something like uh, more transit, more bicycle lanes, um, just a, a better way of life. Uh, uh, that's and the veto power is, is rather powerful. I think uh, Mayor Jin should have used the veto power in uh, this leaf blower ban that I think entirely took entirely too much time of uh, of the council. Thank you. I agree with much of what's been said, but there's one thing I think that's been really missing, and that's the role of the mayor uh, advocating on behalf of the citizens, residents, businesses of Redondo Beach to the county to the state. To the federal government. I think the mayor is the one person who represents all of Redondo Beach and that it's really important that the mayor take that leadership position and be out there in front on issues that affect the city from unfunded mandates to new regulations that are coming down that affect everyone here in Redondo Beach. I think uh, the other aspect of the mayor that I think is really important is to take on a leadership position in the local community. And uh, I think, as an example, Measure A, and I've, like I've said before, I'm coming out against Measure A. I'm saying vote no on Measure A because I think it is wrong for the city of Redondo Beach. And I think it's important to, uh, for someone who expects to be mayor to take a leadership position on important issues like that. Okay. Thank you. Um, our next question is, uh, we'll start with Pat, and it's the uh, Los Angeles Air Force Base is a major influence to the economic engine of the South Bay, and there's a threat of another round of base closures in the near future. As mayor, what role would you play to keep the base here? Well, um, I've already taken uh, some, some lead leadership in that area, and um, when, when it first came around and we were going to lose the base, we, we were able to, to save it. Now we have to save it. What um, a lot of the, the bureaucrats don't understand is you don't just move it to South Dakota and save money. You don't, the operation has to be done, but they're, they're talking about, well, we can move it and save money. They can't save money because the, the technical experts are here. They've been here since the 50s. The whole satellite industry was built here. That is our satellite um, station. I mean, uh, um, th that's where all the contracts for satellites and everything go through. It is pivotal to our defense and our region and our economy because we need to save it in order to keep those qualified people here and, and keep that money here. Eric? Yes. Uh, I think if we lose the Air Force Base, uh, we're going to hear a giant sucking sound all throughout Redondo. And I think more to the point, uh, if I would do everything possible, I would offer every kind of incentive to keep that base here. And I think if the city, uh, the recent history of what the city has been doing is any kind of test, we'll probably just end up suing the Air Force Base for leaving, uh, just like Nordstrom's. Uh, now that's a funny case. Uh, they left and sued for breach of contract as well as uh, not filing an environmental impact report. And then, of course, the city of Soren Torrance and the, uh, the South Bay Galleria, uh, the, the mall there sued the South Bay Galleria. I mean, where does this end? Are we going to declare war on Torrance? What are we going to do? Annex Rat Beach to block their access to the sea? I just don't understand why the city is so litigious and chooses to, and, and the batting record is atrocious as well. I mean, if the city attorney was, uh, if, if he was a batsman, he would be bounced back to the miners. It just it lost all these lawsuits and it's cost the city millions of the taxpayers millions of dollars and uh, I just don't see any sense to it yeah. thank you well I've already uh, worked in part with uh, council member Aspel here in traveling back to DC we met with numerous leaders there both our state uh, Senate leaders uh, uh, Representative Waxman, we met with Jane Harmon, who although is no longer a legislative leader, was instrumental in keeping uh, Los Angeles Air Force Base here in the past, asked her uh, guidance on what we should do. Um, we made sure that uh, Representative Waxman um, took visits here and took a tour of the 
industries that are supported by the LA Air Force Base, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and the rest. And so uh, we've already been proactive. I've been proactive with regards to uh, making sure that LA Air Force Base stays here, uh, understanding the importance of the LA Air Force Base to our local economy in the South Bay. Thank you. Steve? You were back there, too? I was back Okay. There. I was with him. Uh, history, uh, Redondo has a long history of, of trying to help that Air Force Base stay, in, stay in, the, in the South Bay, and it's not going to change no matter who you have as mayor, I guarantee you that. But it is important. My dad was worked for Garrett Air Research. I grew up in Westchester. Without the Air Force Base there, uh, half the people in this room wouldn't be here. Uh, we've been back there, obviously, to, to D.C. numerous times, as, as our predecessors have. It's not a matter of losing jobs to Topeka, Kansas, or to Texas, or to North Dakota. It's a matter of national security, because the people that work here are simply not going to move to those places to go work for the firms that are relocating. So it's, the sequestration comes up every 10 years, and our city has to be uh, ever ready to go back there and do battle with our Congress people and our senators, and uh, I think we've shown ability to do that, and uh, I will continue to go do that. And, and it, it, as we will all agree, it's extremely important. Thank you. Okay, um, Eric, you get to start this one. Sure. Um, AES has submitted plans to repower into a much smaller footprint and has offered up to 38 acres for other uses. Is Measure A the right solution for the AES site? Or do you prefer another solution? Yes, on Measure A. Uh, when it comes to the AES quagmire, the AES propaganda machine has churned out an, an impressive amount of misinformation, producing a bunch of sticks in the mud, bumps on a log, and wet blankets with a generous amount of feet dragging. We have the opportunity now, Redondo, to pass Measure A and rezone that land, 40% commercial and 60% open space. Much of AES's chicanery is in convincing the, pub the public that Measure A will lead to conduization. Nothing could be further from the truth. If AES has their way and builds a small plant, the unused land will indeed be sold off to condo developers, and that will increase, increase our traffic, our sewage, our public safety costs, and those public safety costs are very high. As Councilman Brand put it, particulate emissions from a new power plant will increase 5 to 15 times more than the existing one, uh, leading to a host of health problems. I'm very concerned with that soil as well. How toxic is that soil? Now, it's built on liquefaction ground. A good earthquake could split that open. All those toxic chemicals could drain into the groundwater flush out to the harbor, and waking up to a million dead fish would seem commonplace. Okay. Matt? Uh, no on Measure A. Uh, measure A is not the solution we need here in Redondo Beach. Uh, it will lead to years of litigation with AES. It's not a question of being scared of AES. I'm actually uh, the only council member, the only candidate who uh, supported a resolution opposing the new power plant. Uh, the issue is is that this is not the right solution. This is not the right way to go about removing uh, the power plant from our coastal area. There's numerous problems with it, including the fact that it's spot zoning. It doesn't use really the zoning that's surrounding it. It requires uh, the zoning across the street is 20% public open space, and here they're uh, demanding over 60% public open space. Uh, across the street, there's no set percentage of view corridors. Over 50% of that property, it would be dedicated to view corridors under Measure A. So, uh, no, I don't support Measure A. It's the wrong way to go about removing the power plant from this location, and it will lead to literally millions of dollars in cost for the city. Thank you. Steve? No, I don't support Measure A. When I was on the planning commission, along with Matt, back in the early 2000s, and we had the, we came up with the infamous heart of the city. Now, had that gone through, uh, we might have 2,998 condominiums there when nobody wanted that. However, the power plant would not be there. So the only reason I don't want Measure A is because I don't think there's enough meat on the bone to give AES enough critical mass to, to actually move. If, uh, if well, depending who you talk to, it's either 60-40 split or 70-30 split, and uh, as far for uh, development versus uh, open area. I don't know if and when the money for a park will ever come to fruition. In our economy now, I don't see it happening for a long time. Uh, so just based on that, I just don't think that particular measure is suitable for our city. I don't think the citizens of Redondo want to subsidize uh, a parkland, and for whether for us or for Hermosa or for anybody else. So no. Pat? 
From the beginning, I've been very much in favor of the people having a vote on the future of the power plant. I've had two votes done right here in this council chamber uh, to trying to allow the people to vote and weigh in on their feeling on the power plant. But I also was totally against a zoning initiative, it's one like Measure A, and said that I would not do a resolution to the, to the CEC if we um, uh, tied it to an initiative. Measure A is a 30-page document full of ambiguity that is contradictory to itself. When it says that it, it, they, they can't, you know, the spacing and the height limits and all these, and they keep contradicting what's already there, it is not good uh, law for our city. It is not what we need. We need to make a decision on the power plant, and then we need to decide what's going to be built there. Thank you. Okay. Thank goodness we're done with that one. Um, okay, because of the constant demand for providing city services, there is regular pressure to increase city revenues. How would you propose um, that we accomplish this? And we start with Matt. I've been an opponent of a number of fee increases that have come through. In some cases, I felt they were too abrupt and needed to be spaced in or phased in and not uh, uh, put in so abruptly. There's a number of ways for us to increase revenue. We're working on that uh, with regards to encouraging business, encouraging uh, development in some areas uh, such as the North Redondo Beach where they're looking at building, we, they are going to build two new hotels. Um, I think important in this is that when you want people to spend money in your city, you need to make sure you have a safe city. So I think uh, working to make sure that Redondo Beach is, per, is looked at as being a safe place to come and enjoy yourself and spend money, whether it be at the harbor or the pier or any place else at the uh, in the city is a really important aspect of that but I think if we foster good business sense uh, in the city we will get the uh, revenue from it okay thank you Steve you know I think the current council has done a pretty good job of bringing it or helping bring in new business we have uh, the hotels up on Marine Street Marine going to start groundbreaking very shortly the shade hotel will be groundbreaking very shortly you have the uh, center Cal we call it the, the harbor revitalization that's, that's a lot of money. And once these businesses come in, there's going to be a lag time, but you're going to have a, all this new income base to help pay for, and it's ongoing income, not one-time money, to help pay for public services and police and fire and public works. Uh, as far as helping new business, streamlining the permit process so they can open up businesses on the PCH, a lot of it has to do with parking issues. Uh, which we're going to have to tackle those issues really soon just to open up these stores uh, for new business. But the, we're, we're working really hard right now to bring in all kinds of business, and then we still have to work on the, on the uh, upgrading and helping out uh, the Galleria. And I'm certain that uh, once this all debacle is over, they'll find a replacement for Nordstrom's. Okay. Pat? 